In the perennial pursuit for a solution to the problem of water scarcity, new innovative trends and technologies have begun to emerge, bringing glimmers of hope to many parched throats and arid places. One of the most novel emerging technologies is the atmosphere water generator, which is also referred to as a hydroplane. This refers to devices that work to distill liquid out of thin air. These devices do not generate just any kind of water, they generate water fit for consumption. In this video, we assess new breakthroughs that will take us further in the challenge to reduce water scarcity. Perhaps these breakthroughs will involve the monsoon winds, which bring respite and relief to millions living in places with severe water scarcity, such as India, the United Arab Emirates, Djibouti, Yemen, Lebanon, and other affected regions of the world. You might be thinking about the unpleasant phenomenon of water scarcity and wondering why it is even a problem for humanity at all. Well, many others have also asked these same questions. Since the world is largely covered by water, it is ironic that humanity grapples with water crises. 71% of the Earth is covered by water. Earth's total water is not gathered in one place but exists in various forms. It exists as a liquid, as vapor, as ice, and underground. Furthermore, the different locations and forms of water have different characteristics, some of which can make water unfit for consumption. 96.5% of the world's water is located in the oceans and is high in sodium chloride. Hence, it is unfit for consumption. On the other hand, not more than 3% of the water on Earth is fresh water. Disappointingly, not all of that 3% is accessible to man. As much as 68% of it is frozen in glaciers and polar regions. Underground water accounts for 30% of the fresh water on Earth, while only 0.3% of the fresh water supply is found in lakes, rivers, and swamps. Meanwhile, underground fresh water and the fresh water in swamps and lakes is not evenly distributed among the continents and countries of the world. 9% of the world's fresh water resources are located in Africa. The Americas have the largest share of 45%, Asia has 28%, and Europe has 15.5%. In terms of the freshwater resources per person within each continent, the Americas have 24,000 miles cubed year, Europe has 9,300 meters cubed year, Africa has 5,000 meters cubed year, and Asia has the lowest amount of 3,400 meters cubed year. Based on this breakdown, it becomes clear why the problem of water scarcity persists. According to UNICEF, 4 billion people are victims of severe water scarcity for one month each year. This problem has inspired many to research for other means of generating clean water. One such method that has already been discovered is desalination. So what is desalination? Basically, desalination refers to a method for deriving fresh water from saline water. It separates the mineral components from the liquid. Recall that we said earlier that the water in the oceans, which accounts for 96% of the world's water, is largely undrinkable. This is due to its extreme saltiness. Desalination, therefore, is an innovative process of removing salt from water. Initially, desalination was a technological method common to ships and ocean-going vessels. The first desalination plant based on land was installed in 1928 in the Netherlands. Furthermore, the desalination of saline water is an artificial method of acquiring fresh water from salt water involving two main processes, distillation and reverse osmosis. While there are numerous technologies used by desalination plants, they fall into two main types, membrane-based methods, which include reverse osmosis, and thermal-based methods, such as multi-stage flash desalination. The multi-stage flash method works by channeling the saline water into a chamber where the water is heated and pressured into other chambers. These chambers decrease the pressure and heat of the water in a descending order. An MSF method may have up to 40 stages. This method accounts for about 34% of the desalinated water worldwide. Meanwhile, reverse osmosis, unlike MSF desalination, is a method that uses a semi-permeable membrane. After initial treatment, the saline water is pressured to cause the water to pass through the membranes to derive clean water. However, unfortunately as a method of freshwater derivation, desalination is not totally sustainable due to its impacts on the environment. The leftover water called brine that is discharged into the ocean is harmful to the aquatic environment. Its concentrated salinity eliminates the oxygen in the water and causes organisms to die. It also generates a greenhouse effect due to its high dependence on fossil fuels for energy. For these reasons, other means of generating water must be considered. 
This brings us to atmospheric water generation. Atmospheric water generation is the process of extracting clean water from foggy air using atmospheric generators. Unlike desalination, which derives clean water from seawater, it derives water from the humid atmosphere. In other words, water generation depends on the level of water vapor within the air. This process, of course, comes handy in places where water is available in substantial amounts in the air, and there is difficulty in accessing clean water. As stated earlier, some of the world's water exists in the atmosphere. The atmosphere serves as a reservoir for water, and it holds an estimated value of 3,000 cubic miles of water, which is equivalent to 12,900 cubic kilometers. Therefore, the atmosphere provides a good source of clean water. AWG uses a system that is identical to that in our air conditioners. When the AC suctions in warm air, it permeates the coils within the AC, which is cooled down by a refrigerant. Since water can only be sustained in warm air, as the air is cooled, it releases the water, which is usually disposed of. However, in AWG, the water from humid air is condensed and stored. The generated liquid is subjected to constant filtering to ensure that it stays free of pathogens. This is promising for solving water challenges. The first AWG technology that we shall consider is the Tsunami 500. Still not excited about the prospects of atmospheric water generators? Keep watching as we learn more about these recent breakthroughs, which might just eclipse water desalination plants and end water scarcity. Before that, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more interesting updates. The Tsunami 500 is a medium-scale AWG. In fact, this device is portable enough to be used in places such as schools, homes, offices, and other communal spaces. How does the Tsunami 500 work? Tsunami products are known for their patented machines, which extract water from the water vapor in the air. The unit fans of the Tsunami 500 suck in the humid air, and a series of air filters trap solid impurities in the air. Afterwards, the air permeates the condensing coils, and the air is cooled to the dew point. Then, vapor is precipitated into water droplets. A unique feature of the Tsunami products is the Tsunami Core Tech. This technology ensures a greater output than just any AWG by forcing the condensation of water, which is collected in a tank and treated effectively to occur. Interestingly, it has a production rate of 0.5 to 8 gallons per hour. Additionally, it can be supported by a single power grid or a solar power system of 8,000 watts. It requires an operating temperature of 60 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. If the dew point is higher than 50 degrees Fahrenheit, it generates water. An increase in the amount of water generated occurs as the dew point increases. The Tsunami 500's upgraded version, the Tsunami 750, produces as many as 329 gallons of water per day. Another exciting innovation in the race to solve water scarcity is a novel breakthrough championed by a group of engineers from the University of Texas. This innovation is purely solar powered. How brilliant! Called super sponges, this technology is based on hydrogels, which are gel polymer hybrid materials that are designed to hold a large amount of water. This technology is a successful combination of hygroscopic and thermal responsive hydrophilicity. It expands to absorb water and releases water when it is exposed to heat. More exciting is the fact that this technology can generate water in arid regions. According to Fei Zhao, a postdoctoral researcher and co-author of a study on this technology, this system needs just a little intervention from the users. Moreover, it does not consume energy, and it operates using the heat from sunlight. Gai Hua Yu, the team leader, is working to patent and commercialize this strategy. The third technology on today's list is the fog catcher. Dr. Josh Wong, a professor of mechanical engineering, led a research team that constructed a lightweight, battery-powered freshwater tapper that can generate up to 10 gallons of water per hour from humid air. This system is based on a nanofiber method and electrospun polymers. By using electric forces, electrospinning creates polymer fibers with thickness that range from tens of nanometers up to one micrometer. This size is appropriate for condensing and squeezing water droplets out of the air. This method introduced by Dr. Josh Wong provides a much larger volume ratio than typical membranes used in water distillers. By using polymers that are hydrophilic and hydrophobic, his team found that a water harvesting system could be created with nanofiber technology. In fact, in addition to its minute energy consumption, it could work in arid areas provided that the atmosphere has the correct level of humidity. 
Interestingly, the water that is generated can be consumed immediately. These breakthroughs are no doubt giant strides in dealing decisively with the problem of water scarcity. If these technologies are successfully commercialized, desalination and the environmental havoc that comes with desalination would effectively disappear.